Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. It's just me today, I'm solo. But I am gonna talk to you today about something that I know weighs on a lot of people. I know that you've probably experienced this in one way, shape, form, or another, either with yourself, a family member, a friend. But the title of today's episode is Anxiety is Not an Excuse may seem like it might be a little bit heavy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to tickle in my throat from that cold I had last week, but I'm hoping that I can put some, a new perspective, shed some light on anxiety, what it is, who has it and how you can navigate it. If this isn't something that you have experienced yourself, I am pretty sure based on the statistics that you know somebody that it has influenced. And so this is information that you can readily share. If And I think that as we go through the, the information, as I present it to you through this episode, I think you're going to discover some tips and tools that you'll be able to use to take forward with you as you start and grow your business. So I am going to dive straight in. And I want to tell you that the prevalence of anxiety is on the rise. In the past two years, the prevalence has increased by 25%, mostly in women and youth. Of course, we have COVID to blame in, in some respect, but the pressures of our day-to-day -day lives, the state of uh, affairs in the world are all shifting and changing, not only because of COVID but because of the times we're living in. And so that prevalence of anxiety is on the rise. And that is why this is such an incredibly important topic to address. Anxiety is not an excuse for staying stuck, procrastinating, or making bad choices, whether in life or business. Let's look at what anxiety is and is not. Anxiety is an abnormal sense of apprehension and fear that is often marked by physical signs and symptoms. When one is anxious, they have self-doubt that they will even be able to cope with the situation or person that is making them anxious. I want to differentiate between anxiety, being nervous, and worry. Being nervous is different than anxiety. When you are nervous, you may feel like being anxious, but the difference is that when the situation has passed, say you have a speaking engagement, when you have done the thing, when you have spoken to the people that you were speaking to, you feel better. With anxiety, doubtful what if thoughts keep coming into your brain and you don't have a sense of peace after you have finished doing whatever it was you were doing. Now, worry is more of a dwelling on negative thoughts. And I believe it's a choice. It's possible for worry to lead to anxiety, but the worry is not genetic. And despite environmental triggers, worry is something that you can choose to stop. Whereas anxiety may not be something you can stop. You may not be able to easily stop those negative thoughts without help from a team a therapist, maybe medication, and taking really intentional action to change your thoughts. It's important to differentiate between the three, anxiety, nervousness, nervousness, and worry. A pet peeve of mine is hearing people say they are behaving a certain way or making certain choices or can't do something because of anxiety. Anxiety is a clinical diagnosis but that doesn't make it an excuse. So who has anxiety? Approximately 31% of adults in the United States have anxiety. Women are twice as likely than men to have anxiety. 23% of women versus 14% of men. Interestingly enough, only 37 to 43% of people who have anxiety seek treatment. And as I mentioned before, the prevalence of anxiety has increased by 25% just in the past couple of years. Anxiety is not an excuse to not take action in your life and business. Anxiety may increase your level of fear, or it may keep you stuck in a cycle of doubt, overthinking, and indecision. And anxiety may cause you 
to want to give up, but you have a choice. You can choose to let anxiety control your thoughts, emotions, choices, and behaviors, or you can choose to take action to navigate anxiety and take control of your thoughts. How can you recognize anxiety? The signs and symptoms of anxiety include fatigue because of an inability to sleep and reset your mind, headaches, irritability, unexplained stomach aches, outbursts of anger, racing heartbeat, shortness of breath. Sometimes it's an inability to catch your breath if you actually go so far as to have severe anxiety and have panic attacks. To navigate anxiety, you must recognize the triggers that are causing these symptoms to occur. If you are experiencing any of the symptoms, it is important to pause and evaluate what is going on in your life. Do you have someone, or I should say, did you have an argument with someone? Do you have a presentation or a speaking engagement on the horizon? Are you preparing to travel? Do you have guests, maybe family coming to visit? Maybe you have unexpected bills or expenses piling up. Maybe one of your children is going through difficult times. Do you have a sales call or some big meeting on your calendar coming up? What is making you anxious? The emphasis here is on the mind-body connection. Once you identify the symptoms, and what the trigger is, you can create a strategy to navigate that situation without letting anxiety hold you back. Anxiety is not an excuse to stay stuck. There will always be an opportunity to be anxious. It's part of life, especially if you have a genetic predisposition. There can be an alteration in your DNA and there is epigenetics. Epigenetics are the generational environmental influences like trauma that can influence how your brain thinks and works. Life is full of experiences, good and bad, that will trigger anxious thoughts, whether you have a clinical diagnosis or not. But it is never an excuse to overthink and stay stuck. God made our brains in such a miraculous way that we can change the neural pathways from thinking negative what-if thoughts to being grateful and thinking positive thoughts. Fear accompanies anxiety. What-if thoughts will ebb and flow, but with anxiety, they are more likely to overwhelm you and keep you from acting on that God-led calling, your purpose. Instead of using anxiety as an excuse to not act or to sit in a place of indecision, adopt strategies and tools that I'm gonna give you to navigate the anxiety. If you have an idea or feel a pull towards something, that is God nudging you toward your calling. When you don't take action, you are doing a disservice to those people that he's calling you to serve. It's a choice. A reminder from scripture. Romans 12, 2, and this is one of my favorite verses, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Anxiety is not an excuse for behavior choices. We know from science and scripture that our beliefs trigger our thoughts and our thoughts influence our emotions and feelings. Emotions and feelings determine our choices and behaviors. This cycle determines the outcomes because your thoughts produce your results. Let's say you're anxious about what steps to take to begin your business. As a result, you think you can't do it. You don't have the ability or resources. Someone else is already doing it, etc. This list could go on and on. And I'm sure that a lot of you probably relate to it. How do these thoughts make you feel? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that your emotions may be sadness, fear, doubt, helplessness, frustration, being overwhelmed, inadequacy, and maybe even resentment. 
these emotions make you feel less than motivated, maybe unworthy, sluggish, confused, hopeless, and certainly you feel a lack of confidence. As a result, you sit on the couch and watch Netflix instead of working on your action steps to start and grow your business. Or maybe you procrastinate in another way. I'm just using the Netflix as an example because I think it's a common one. The outcome, you don't have a solid foundation for your business and you have minimal, if any, results. And the people that God has called you to serve can't find you and they can't get the help that they need. Ouch. What if you change your beliefs and thoughts and avoid using anxiety as an excuse? What you focus on is what you create. Instead of doubting, now you believe that God is calling you and you have a purpose to fulfill. And you believe that if he's calling you, he will equip you. He will put the right people and information in your path. You've lived a journey with many experiences that have led you right to where you are today. And you now have the insight that others need. All of your experiences give you a sense of expertise and authority to now lead others to a solution. Positive thoughts that you can do the work that God is equipping you, that you've already got all you need inside of you to lead you to joyful, hopeful, inspired emotions. And as a result, you'll feel excited and confident. Now you're motivated to accomplish the right tasks in the right order to bring your business to life and attract your soulmate clients. You are eager to accept the abundance that God has in store for you when you pursue your purpose. The outcome, you start and grow a business to have a meaningful impact in the world while making money to support your family, to live in abundance and joy, and to be able to give more through charitable giving. It's not easy to navigate anxiety. I gave an example of how your beliefs and your thoughts influence your outcomes. It may be easy, but it may seem easy, but it's not simple. You must take daily action. You have to be disciplined and you have to be motivated. But listen, when you, when you are motivated, you will make progress and then you'll build momentum and more progress will follow. You can navigate anxiety. I suggest journaling, write the negative beliefs and thoughts, document the emotions and feelings that they trigger, then write out the action or lack thereof that you will take because of those emotions and feelings, what outcomes will follow then on the same page so that your brain can see the opposite, write positive beliefs and thoughts about that same situation, that same experience scenario that you're facing. Document the emotions and feelings that those positive beliefs and thoughts trigger. Then write out the action that you're now inspired and motivated to take. And lastly, document the outcomes that you will achieve by taking said action. The more you catch those negative beliefs and what if thoughts and challenge them, the faster you will be able to change them. If the what if thoughts aren't rational or realistic, if someone you love and respect wouldn't be thinking them too, change them. It's time to change them. Let go of them. Get rid of them. The more you practice this mind modeling method that I have, the more control you'll have. With God's help, of course, I mean, you're not going to be able to do it alone. You've got to tap into that resource of, of God and, and the Holy Spirit to guide you through this. But you'll have more control over your thoughts. And guess what? When you have more control over those thoughts, you're going to be more confident to make decisions, decisions that will move you forward in your life and business. You will alleviate overthinking. What if thoughts will start to dissipate? 
I'm not saying they're ever going to go away completely. If you have clinical anxiety, those what if thoughts are probably going to always be part of your life, but that's why you need this tool, the five C's journaling method and following this example of really looking and focusing on your beliefs and thoughts and transforming them, transitioning them to change the trajectory of your life and business. Your beliefs can do that, and especially your belief in God and tapping into scripture and the resources he has given you there. You will become more confident and you'll make decisions that will move you to the next level of both impact and success. Another tip that I think is very important for navigating anxiety is to stay aligned with your core values. When you align with your core values in every decision that you make, You will overthink less and you'll be able to be less anxious. If you haven't already identified your core values, listen to episode 213. I have the link in the show notes so that you can easily just hop over to it and learn how to establish your core values and then how to implement them in your daily life and business goals. And of course, you can always use scripture as a resource to navigate anxiety. A couple of go-to verses that I use are Philippians 4, 6, which says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Excuse me. And 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The first verse that I read mentioned thanksgiving. I can assure you that having a gratitude practice and journaling about gratitude every single day, those blessings that you see in all of your daily activities, that helps you change those negative anxious thoughts to positive thoughts as well. It gives you a much more positive perspective on your overall life and business. Because at the end of the day, there's so many things to be thankful for. Even things that maybe were mistakes, appeared to be a failure, They were learning experiences and there's a blessing in there somewhere that you can now take forward into the next day or the next however many years in your life and business. Anxiety is a reason to avoid social media when you start a business. Oh, this is a big one. It's a hot topic. And I know I go totally against the grain on this, but the reason I feel so strongly about avoiding social media when you start a business is because the negative beliefs and thoughts that it can trigger. The distractions of what you should, air quotes, should be doing, the advice from others who may not be aligned with your values, they don't have the same exact calling you have. They don't have the same life journey that you've had. They don't have the same experiences that you've had to give you the the expertise and authority that you have, that God has given you. The pressure to be present and create content that could disappear tomorrow, the comparison and the doubt. All these things result in more anxiety and worry about your business. In addition, you might see things on social media that will tempt you to believe in things that are not scriptural. They're not based on God's word and what God's calling for you is and his purpose for you, like manifesting clients and money, or that the universe, in quotes, universe, will guide you. Listen, God created the universe and all good and perfect gifts come from him. If you are confused about manifestation or its legitimacy from a scripture perspective, I encourage you to listen to episode 167. I'll link that in the show notes as well. I'm making it super easy for you guys to get as much information as possible to help you navigate starting a business without all the anxiety and not using anxiety as an excuse to hold you back. Because just because you have anxiety doesn't mean you shouldn't start a business. It doesn't mean that you can't start a business. It's not an excuse. It's something that you can navigate and still take action that will move you forward to achieve your goals and dreams and really pursue that purpose that God has called you for. The best way to start your business is to focus on your personal brand. I'll hyperlink an episode, a previous episode on that as well, and a blog post. Uh, Create a brand marketing strategy and systems and tools and processes. Implement SEO to build a solid foundation for your business. Stay aligned with your values. Don't waver on what you believe to be your core values. And don't waver on your faith either. Don't let these distractions online pull you away from God and his purpose for you. My purpose to results method combines mindset, strategy, and action. 
We incorporate faith and scripture, but you need all three mindset, strategy, and action without distractions to build the foundation first. Using the purpose to results method will help alleviate anxiety and overthinking when you start your business because you'll have the right steps in the right order and you won't have to feel anxious about what to do next or making decisions. You won't be sitting in a place of overthinking. Once you've built the foundation and your content is on a platform that you own and control, it's safe from hackers, you can use social media to build relationships and have fun. But don't attempt to build your business on social media before you have built the foundation. You wouldn't furnish your home before you built the, built the walls around it to keep all the furnishings safe. It's the same thing with your business. Build the foundation on platforms you own, like your website, use an email list, things that you own to build your content cornerstone or your cornerstone content and the structure of your business. Doing it on social media will delay your ability to have a meaningful impact and it'll delay making money. I want to leave you with this. It is possible to start and grow a business with simplicity, ease, and grace, to follow your God-like calling and purpose, to have a meaningful impact in the world, and to make money. But most importantly, without anxiety. I should say, without added anxiety without added anxiety and stress. I have more information on anxiety and entrepreneurship that you can find in episode 161. Again, I'll put the link to that episode in the show notes and also two additional resources for you related to anxiety. One is I created an ebook alleviate anxiety by developing healthy habits for a healthy mind. You can download that Inside of that free ebook are, is my five C's journaling method. So you can learn that journaling method as well as it will help you because it gives you a place to, to document your triggers and your symptoms and what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. Who do you trust? Who can you go to for help? All of those good things. There's so many exercises in this free ebook. It's based off of the journal for my book, You, Me, and Anxiety, Take Action Over Anxiety to Enjoy Being You, which I will hyperlink that as well as the free ebook. And you can access both of those to learn more about anxiety and start navigating so that you can live a happy, joyful, purposeful, peaceful life and start a business too. All right. If you have questions about anything I said today, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me directly at info at therobingraham.com. I would love to hear from you. If you found this information helpful, please be so kind as to leave a rating and review. That's how we get this information to more people so that more people can see transformation in their lives and go out and start a business and have a bigger impact, right? Together, we can create a ripple effect of good in the world. And that starts with ratings and reviews so that more people can find us. And please share this episode with friends and family members who you think might find it helpful. There's too much angst in the world. There's too much anxiety. Let's see what we can do to shift that. Thanks for being here, friends. I truly appreciate you. I love you all. I'm sending so many positive vibes to you. And I'll see you next week for another episode of The Robin Graham Show.